Okay, here's a problem where um, a box of mass m is pulled up an incline with angle theta, and we're told that if the, the box is accelerating with acceleration a, there's a coefficient of kinetic friction on the surface mu k, and we are asked to find the tension in the string with which the mass is being pulled up the incline. So this is a pretty standard um, fan clan or falcon problem. So let's use the falcon methodology to solve this problem as an example. Okay, so we start with F, which stands for Newton's second law, net force equals the mass times the acceleration. And we also need to do the free body diagram for this picture. So in this case, we'll draw a little dot to represent our mass, and now we'll start drawing the forces on it. So we have the tension force, which points that way, up the incline. The gravitational force is acting straight down. We have a normal force, and the normal force always acts perpendicular to the interface between the two objects. So it's going to be 90 degrees from the tension force, so it's going to point in this direction. And finally we have the friction force, which is going to point straight down the incline, so that's going to be exactly opposite to the tension force T, so we'll point in this direction, and that will be F mu. Okay, so that means that if we were to flesh out F equals MA, we would have the sum of all four of these forces equals MA. So we can write that. So we're going to have N plus T plus FG plus F mu equals M times A. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to A. So A stands for, first of all, axes, and so we have a choice with axes. Axes are not set by nature. Um, so when I look at this picture, um, F mu, T, and N are perpendicular to each other. So I'm going to orient my axes along the ramp, um, because if I do that, then these three forces are only acting in one direction instead of two directions. So it's less work. I'll only need to take components of the gravitational force. So I want my axes to go this way. So let's say plus x is up the incline and plus y is perpendicular to the incline. Now we need to ask how is this object accelerating? Well, we know what the acceleration is. The acceleration is A, and it's up the ramp. So the acceleration is in the positive x direction. So if we were to write the acceleration as a vector, we would say the acceleration is A, and it's in the x hat direction, so we multiply by x hat. And that's our acceleration vector. Okay, next we do L for laws. So what laws do we have here? So we look over at our forces. Normal force is just normal force, so it's tension. Fg is going to be mg. But we need to figure out the direction in which it points. So Fg is pointing straight down. So we know the magnitude of Fg is m times g. Then we'll need to figure out what the components are. So if we look at this free body diagram and we put a little dashed line here, we need to figure out which angle is theta. And I claim it's this one. You should try to show or prove to yourself that that's, that's the angle theta. Um, so our vector fg will have two components. So it points in the negative x direction. So the x component is going to be minus mg 
and it's actually the sine of the angle. And the y component is also negative, and it's mg cosine theta. Okay, great. Do we have any other laws? Yes. The friction force is going to be equal to mu times the normal force. But it points in a different direction, so that's its magnitude of mu. So which way does it point? Well, if we look at the picture, if the mass is accelerating up the incline, the frictional force is going to point down the incline in the negative x direction. So if we want to write this as a vector, we can write mu f n times negative x hat. And just rewriting that gives us negative mu f n times x hat. Okay, so c is next. So for C, we need to do components. So let's start with the X component. So we're look, we'll look at this equation and we'll just write down the X component of it. So the normal force does not point in the X direction, so there's no component of N in the, normal, in the um, X direction. T definitely points in the X direction. So we have t, and then we need the x component of fg. If we look over here, and we see that that's minus mg sine of the angle, and then f mu. f mu is minus mu fn, and that's it. So then on the other side, we have m times the component of acceleration, the x direction. So we look at where we wrote down the acceleration vector, and we see that it does have a component in that direction. It's just a. So this is m times a. Okay, great. And then I might take a quick look at this and make sure that it makes sense. So I've got the x direction is this way, so I should have a t. I should have a negative mu. Um, and I need a component of gravity that points in the negative x direction. So that's great. Now we'll write down the y component. So again, we look at this equation and we start writing down the y components. So n is totally in the y direction, it's in the positive y direction, so we just write n. t has no component in y. fg does have a component in y. We just look back over here and pick it off. So it's minus mg cosine theta. And mu was only in the x direction, so no component here. And a was fully in the x direction, so this is just equal to zero. Okay, so the next thing to do is to organize our algebra. And I think I'll do the algebra, yeah, I'll do it down here. So here's O. So what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for t. That's what we want to solve for. And what do we know? Well, we know the mass, we know g, we know theta, we know mu, we don't know fn, um, we know m, and we know a. So that's good. Um, here, and, oh, and I, I did not follow my convention. I should have written this as a capital N instead of FN because I wrote it as a big N here. Um, okay, so we don't know N, but we do know MG and we do know theta. So we want to solve for T. We don't know N, but we have the second equation that tells us what N is. So we have two equations and two unknowns. T is one of them and n is the other unknown. So we just need to eliminate the unknown that we don't want. So I'm going to solve the y equation for n. So if I do that, n, just add this to both sides, is mg cosine of theta. 
So now we can take this and plug it in here for n. So I'm just going to rewrite this equation and substitute this in for n. So t minus mg sine theta minus mu times n. n is mg cosine theta equals m times a. Okay, so now I need to rearrange stuff on my desk so I can push this up a little bit more. So the only thing left to do is to solve for t. So I just move these two terms over to the other side and, and we're done. So t is mg sine theta minus plus mu mg cosine theta plus m times a. And I could rewrite this um, a little bit more if I wanted to, like I could pull out the mg, um, but I don't really have to. So this is, this is it. Now the no nonsense would ask, we could say, well, what's an extreme case where we really know what the answer is? So imagine that there was no friction Imagine you had the same case. You have the incline, there's no friction, and let's say the angle is zero. So the problem, if the angle is zero, reduces to a block on a surface that's being pulled with some tension T. So if T is the only force acting on it, because there's no friction, if it's the only force acting in the X direction, then T must, be, must give you the acceleration of the block. So in that case, you would just have t equals m times a, because this would be zero, and the angle would be zero, so this term would be zero. And you would just be left with t equals ma, which is what we'd expect from this simplified case. So that's a good way to check that your answer is correct.